say protein, we also can classify based on their first is about the structure. Okay. Uh, and then the composition and last one in terms of their first we look at for the structure. In terms of structure, either this protein are fibrous or globular protein. Uh, as an example, previous slide, okay, we have collagen. Okay, collagen is one of the fibrous protein. Okay, hemoglobin is one of the uh, example of globular protein. So, uh, a little bit about the structure for fibrous protein. Okay, normally, fibrous protein is a long parallel polypeptide chain like collagen just now. Okay, and then they are uh, maintain the structure. Okay, maybe in the form of helical or pitted. Okay, by the hydrogen bond. Okay, they have this uh, bond, okay, hydrogen bond. And then the compose of secondary structure, beta beta sheet and or alpha helix. Okay, and uh, in solubility, solubility in water, they are not soluble in water. Uh, so, uh, besides of collagen, okay, uh, we look at the keratin, keratin that are found in our uh, hair. Or in our nails, right? Okay, so uh, if we dissolve or we uh, use our hair and then we put in the water, so our hair uh, do not uh, solute, solute, do not dissolve in the water, right? Okay, because they are fibrous protein. Okay, and uh, in terms of the sequence of amino acid, mostly they are repetitive. A repetitive regular amino acid sequence between the fibrous protein. It found but for globular protein. So in contrast with the fibrous protein, most of globular protein, they are uh, at the tertiary level of organization, okay, uh, so that they uh, help the structure or stabilize the structural, okay, globular structure by uh, hydrogen bond, the ionic bond, hydrophobic interaction, and also the disulfide linkage. And then, okay, uh, they are soluble in water, okay, and they can form a suspension, okay, we call it as a colloidal suspension. And the amino acid sequence is not regular, or we, we call it as an irregular amino acid sequence. So, um, such a hemoglobin, we have myoglobin, the antibodies, or enzyme itself. Okay, one type of the globular protein. Second one, the classification based on the composition. What is the component inside that protein? If that protein does only have amino acid, just a sequence of amino acid should not contain any other substance like uh, uh, carbohydrates or lipids. So that one we call as a simple protein because they only have or consists of amino acid. Okay. So example here we have uh, albumin or serum albumin, okay, uh, globulin like uh, antibody or fibrinogen, okay, histones, spiroprotein, okay, creatine collagen, that one is a simple protein. Okay. They only have amino acid. Okay. We compare with the conjugated protein, it means that conjugate okay, combination between proteins and non-protein material. So non-protein material we call as a prosthetic group. Okay. Right. So if you ever heard about the uh, hemoglobin just now, okay. so hemoglobin is one of example uh, conjugated protein. Why? Because hemoglobin hem, is actually iron. It's not a protein. Okay. So uh, myoglobin Myoglobin also they contain iron. That one is the protein that we can found in the muscle cells. Okay, uh, lipoprotein, glycoprotein. So let's say for lipoprotein, they have lipid as their prosthetic group. Okay, uh, glycoprotein, okay, they have polysaccharide or carbohydrate. Okay, as their prosthetic group. So conjugated protein is that protein plus non-protein material or prosthetic group. Okay. Alright. And then in terms of functions. So functions, um, maybe we can look at here uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
play a major function of the protein. So we can classify the protein based on their function. What is the function of that protein? For the movement, like actin and myosin, okay, or maybe there are for defense, key defensive, like antibodies, okay, or maybe that uh, proteins are for the support, for structural support, like creatine, okay, or maybe for the um, signaling, signaling, uh, give a signal, send message or carry message for ourselves like hormones, okay, insulin, glucagon. Okay, so that's one based on the function. So that's how we classify a protein. We look at which criteria we want to classify the protein, either based on the function or based on the, their composition or based on their uh, level of organization. Okay, and the last part is the denaturation of protein. So as we know that protein, they have their uh, shapes okay, that are stabilized by a certain certain hard bond or linkage. So uh, yes, protein can be denatured okay, when they are exposed to uh, unfavorable pH or salt condition or concentration and also temperature because we know that the protein okay, will lose their protein's original structure when the bond between the amino acid are broken down. Okay? So high temperature can break down the bond or uh, or low pH can affect the structure of proteins. So that's the normal protein undergo denaturation. So denaturation, the protein become a denatured, lost their original structure and also their function. So when the structure are uh, alter or change, so it will affect the function also. So sometimes the denaturated protein can uh, return to its functional shape when we remove the agent of denaturin and also we remove or restore the chemical and physical aspect of its environment like uh, pH to restore back to the normal condition. But this one, okay, uh, normally we do in a lab okay, or we call it as a vivo. Not happen naturally in the cell. So that's all for